What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to your official match review for Chelsea 4 Crystal Palace nil. And guys, I'm happy. First clean sheet for Edouard Mendy, most comfortable performance for us of the season by a mile. And it was a good performance all round. I'll be real, Crystal Palace did the most that they could to try and make the match last as long as possible. But it was obvious from the way it was going, it, we just needed to break them down and find the goal eventually. And as soon as we found that first goal, the game would eventually start to open up. And that's exactly what happened. But we're going to break down this game in this video. Before I start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button. Press the subscribe button as well and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content on this channel and yeah let's go straight into the lineup uh mendy starts in goal the big surprise is that reese james didn't start because he was also rested for the spurs game as well but we had azpilicue to play at right back tiago silva and zuma made their first center back partnership of the season at center back ben chilwell dropped in at left back we had kante and Jorginho as the two dms Hudson, Doy, Havertz, and Timo Werner as the attacking midfielders, and Tammy Abraham up, fr up front. We lined up in a 4 2 3 1 formation, and for the most part, we were in control, especially throughout the first half, even though it was dragging for long periods. But that was the way Crystal Palace were looking to play. They tried sitting deep and hitting that low block on us and trying to hit us on the counter the same way most teams outside the top six tried to play against us. And it stifled our attack. In many places, I will talk about Timo Werner, who I think we I really think we gotta wait till we see him up front to get him at his best. I'm not saying he had a bad performance, I'm just saying he had a little bit of a disappearing act in this game. He struggles coming in off the wings, it's not as natural to him as when he's up front. And that was clear for us to see throughout this game. He was more or less just doing the bleep test for 90 minutes. He was trying to be involved, but he just couldn't find space in those little pockets of areas because Crystal Palace were not giving us any space to run in behind. And it's something that he needs to learn to adapt more to his game. And I will be real, once we start playing him up front, we are going to see him play a little bit better. I get why we're playing him on the wings right now because we still got Christian Pulisic coming back from injury. We still got Hakim Ziyech yet to come back. So we need someone else in those, in those positions because it's either Mason Mount who has been overplayed to death over the last few games. Or it's just Hudson Doy on his ones as the only winger that we have. So Timo One is just there to fill in the gap for right now. And it's a little bit frustrating because you know he's not playing to his full potential there, but it's something that we just more or less have to understand and go on with it. I'm not gonna delve too much into it because I don't want to be too negative on this video. We have just won 4-0. And we controlled Crystal Palace for long periods of the game. Jorginho, I thought had an excellent game. I thought we were going to see a Kante and Jorginho partnership because you'd want a bit more stability in the middle of the box and that's what happened and to be fair to Crystal Palace they did the one thing you shouldn't do with Jorginho and they gave him space and you know exactly what Jorginho is going to do when he has that space he's going to use it to start attacks and that's exactly what he spent the entire match doing most of his passes were dangerous and they led to good build up plays towards other attacks where we were trying to break down the Crystal Palace defence but obviously throughout the first half, it, it was a struggle. We struggled to find any gaps in behind. Crystal Palace, same way, they barely had any attempts on our goal. I think Wilfred Zaha had less touches than Mendy did throughout the full 90 minutes, which is just showing how much the emphasis was on defence. And they struggled bringing the ball forward and progressing it into attack. They were just playing too defensive. And even after the game turned 1-0, 2-0, they still stuck to that defensive mindset. And I think that's where Crystal Palace went wrong. They tried to open up a little bit more, but they were still too defensively minded. And it just caused them to fall apart towards the end of the second half. We went into half-time at 0-0. It, it didn't look anything too bad at 0-0. We were, we were annoyed at how the game hadn't been progressing, but we knew we were comfortable. We knew we were doing well in possession. We didn't look shaky on the ball or anything like that. It looked like a goal was coming, and a goal did come. Tammy Abraham, I think, was a ball in from Aspel Equator. He tried to get a connection on it, but a flick behind him. Ben Chilwell was free on the left hand side. He smashed it in for 1 0. Great finish. It was a Marcus Alonso esque finish, but it wasn't a Marcus Alonso esque performance from Ben Chilwell. He was amazing. And to a lot of people who are questioning, well, no one was questioning whether he should be, whether he should have been worth that price tag, but people were questioning whether he was the right left back for us to sign. 
he had an amazing performance for us today. And after the last two performances by Marcus Alonso and Emerson, that is exactly the sort of performance I want to see from my left side. He was good defensively, only got caught out the once, but it wasn't even too deep. Going forward, amazing. He made the attacks coming down the left-hand side that much stronger because there was actually a player on the other side who could come forward a little bit quicker and deliver a better cross as well as we go towards the second goal. Ball in from Ben Chua for the corner. It comes straight out onto the left-hand side. Whips in an amazing corner. And Kurt Zuma just jumps on top of everyone like he always does. And puts in the back in the net for 2-0. That 2-0 looks comfortable. I'm also just gassed because we scored off a cross. You know how long it's been since I've seen that. It's something that I really hope becomes a more consistent part of our game. And Zuma was threatening to do that earlier on in the second half as well. He had a cr good cross as well. No, he had a good header from a cross as well that just went wide. So he was threatening to put that goal in. Then he did that anyway and it was 2-0. And then the other two goals were basically just penalties. Of who got taken down for the first one? I think it was Kai Havertz. Jorginho does his usual skip hop and it it just goes in. A little bit of controversy for the, for the second penalty. Timo Werner uh, initially wanted to take it. But Tammy Abraham wanted to take it for his first goal. M not going to lie, I did kind of want Werner to take it. But that's only because I got 20 quid riding on it. Jorginho went... No, I don't think Jorginho went to take it. Aspel Equator came in in the middle of both of them and said, Nope, I want the penalty taker to take it. Jorginho takes it. Fair play to him. Captain's responsibility. He puts down... He lays down the law. And... Especially if you're looking at instance like last season, if you remember the Valencia game where it was Barkley, Jorginho and Willian arguing over the penalty for the longest time and Barkley missed because all the players were put off because they were too busy arguing over the penalty. It was good for someone to come in with a clear head, just be neutral and say, no, you're taking it, you go over there and it's done. It was done, Jorginho put into the back of the net, it was 4-0. And at that point, the game was just more or less finished at that point. I don't think there was any other chances. Crystal Palace had a couple of attacks towards the second half, but their game was just really poor. I'll be real. They looked like they were just trying to cope for 90 minutes. They were trying to hold on for a draw. It, it wasn't a good performance for them. I, even, I can't credit the defence too much. Actually, I can definitely credit Thiago Silva and Kurt Zuma because there was hella blocks coming out from the pair of them. Thiago Silva all around the pitch with his interceptions and tackles. And the passing was well as well. He was also trying to do the Jorginho role of being the deep line playmaker and starting attacks. And he had a very promising performance for himself as well. Back four was amazing even though they didn't have to deal with too much. Edouard Mendy as well. He had a great performance even though he didn't have to do too much. I'm going to go through the player ratings quickly. Starting goal, Edward Mendy, I'm going to give a, probably a six, I think. Yeah, he had a good performance, but again, he just didn't really have a lot to deal with. I think he had one or two saves to deal with throughout the entire match. Crystal Palace were barely trying to attack, but good performance from him, he'll get a six. As for Equator, uh, good build-up play with the cross for the first goal. Six and a half, I think. Yeah, I'll do six and a half because I want to give the best ratings to Thiago Silva and Kurt Zuma. Oh, and Ben Chilwell as well. I'm going to leave it as six for SP. Thiago Silva, seven. Key interceptions, key blocks throughout the first half. There was little moments where Wilfred Zaha could have been running through onto a ball. But then, what was his name? Thiago Silva was the guy in the middle of both of them. He had a great performance today. Again, didn't have to deal with too much, but he had a solid performance. So, I'm going to give him a seven. Kurt Zuma, I'll pull him up to an 8. Do I pull him up to an 8 or to a 7 or not? I'll pull him up to an 8. I'm feeling positive. Yeah, Kurt Zuma, amazing performance as well, but he got the goal as well. So I'll pull him up one more. He gets an 8. Ben Chilwell, man of the match, gets a 9. Amazing performance. Only really got caught out the once and had one goal and an assist to his name. So I'm going to give him an, a 9. And Golo Kante, key interceptions all throughout the pitch. And I can't believe people told me that this guy was washed. He stopped so many transitions, him and Jorginho, throughout that match. Performance was amazing from him today. He gets an 8 as well. Jorginho, 8-2. Controlled the entire tempo of the match. Like I said, key interceptions. Getting the ball out of presses as well. And starting attacks. He had an amazing performance. He gets an 8-2. hudson Doy. That's... Say maybe a six. I think he had a good performance. There was flashes of brilliance, flashes of frustration as well. So I think a six is a fair rating for him. Kai Havertz. Um, I thought he was very smooth on the ball. Very smooth on the ball. Didn't really do much and looked, didn't really do much wrong and looked very composed. So I'm going to give Havertz a seven. I'll give Havertz a seven as well. Timo Werner. 
uh, I have to give him a 5. He was put on the wings. He didn't really have too much impact on there. Really hope to see him have more minutes through the middle. I think it should have been more Tammy that came off so we could try and see Habits. I mean, Werner play through the middle a bit more. But he didn't really have much impact throughout the game, so I'm going to give him a 5. Tammy Abraham, I think I pushed more to a 6 as well. He got the assist for the first goal. Had a couple decent chances as well. I think he was more in and around the game. So I think a six and a half would be fair. I'll give him a six and a half. Uh, moving on to the subs. Pulisic. Um, couple good chances, but only a few moments in the game. So I'll push up to a six. Uh, was that, that just a one sub? Or did I miss anybody? James didn't play. Tamori did. I think it was just a one sub. Yeah, we made a late sub as well. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's the end of my player ratings. Ben Chilwell gets man the match for an amazing performance. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the gels.